cracking. Welcome back to the HQ with your boy Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. We're diving into a mock draft, post NFL draft today. So post NFL draft, mock draft. We're going to do it on fantasy football calculator. I was going to do it on the draft wizard. I think you guys liked that last time and, you know, gave me time to talk in between picks and give you my analysis. But fantasy football calculator, I saw a full draft of real actual people, 12 teams, Full PPR, I was picking from the 11th spot, I believe. I'm doing the intro after I actually did the mock draft. So one thing I want to point out is, first of all, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it or if you've enjoyed any of my videos thus far, if they're valuable to you. That's how you let me know that you like the video, by giving me a thumbs up. What I want you to take away from these mock draft videos, I don't want you to look at my team. You'll look at my team at the end, but that's not what I'm like doing these for. I want you to kind of pin down on the analysis I'm giving and my thought process throughout the draft. I think that's what will help you guys out more if you don't necessarily look at the players, but watch the draft going on. Look at where the players are being picked other than my team, right? You'll see other guys going. And if you watch enough of these, you'll start getting a feel for where guys are going in real competitive drafts, like the ones I'm doing. So look at the draft that's going on just listen to me talking and and my analysis on different players and why I would pick a player here instead of here and things like that that's all I got to say about this so we're going to just dive into it 12 teams PPR post NFL draft mock draft with the rookies in there and I don't want to do too many mock drafts this early because the rookie ADPs are kind of skewed still you'll see a lot of guys like I don't know Rashad Penny is still going in like the ninth round because these sites take the ADP from the end of last year all the way up until now so for the last like six months their ADPs have been bad Anyway, let's just do it. All right, so we're sitting at the 11 pick right now. This is full PPR. After the NFL draft is in the books, so we will have rookies in this thing. This is on Fantasy Football Calculator. You know, a lot of the ADPs are still going to be very skewed right now in terms of rookies because for the most part, the ADPs are based off of like any time after the 2017 season ended all the way up till now. So, you know, for the last two months or say uh, or so, say like Sony Michelle hasn't been picked in the top 100, right? So his ADPs are going to be all the way down there. So you're going to have to look for those guys when you are looking um to draft players. Let me see. Like, yeah. So Nick Chubb's like all the way down here under Garrett Blunt, which is obviously ridiculous, but um, I was going to do it on the draft wizard again. Cause I know a lot of you guys like that and it took longer and it was probably a little more accurate, but it was against a computer and I saw a full room available in fantasy football calculator. So I was like, let's do it with some, uh, let's do it with some real people. So we got a full 12 man league. And again, full PPR. So we have Zeke off the board, Gurley, Bell. Zeke, number one overall, is very questionable in a full PPR. I would say I really wouldn't be that mad at it if it was half PPR or standard. Um, I have my, actually, no, the running back rankings video probably already came out. So you already know my take on Zeke, probably. At this point, um, I mean, you at 11, you kind of just have to see what falls because you have no idea what's really going to happen in the front of this draft. Again, I am one that really likes the idea of getting running backs early and often in this year's draft because that's where I see the value. I see a lot of hidden value later at wide receiver. So um, I would like a top-notch running back, but if it doesn't happen, doesn't happen, right? You got you to gotta draft based on like tiers and value when your team is, you know, when you're starting to draft in the in the first couple rounds. You don't want to just set yourself up to say, hey, I'm going to do a running back, I'm going to do a wide receiver, or I'm going to do a tight end or something like that. So it's whatever really falls to you based on value. And right now, I would honestly be happy with uh, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, any of those top four guys right there are nice. Odell, okay, so I'll have my uh, my pick of Kareem and, and Leonard Fournette. All right, so he went Leonard Fournette. I have pick 11. I will be getting another pick really shortly afterwards. Um, I'm going to go with Kareem Hunt because he is my, I, this is pretty much the ADP except for Alvin Kamara went early. Um, again, so this is PPR. Uh, I like Kareem Hunt here because he's very involved in the passing game. Andy Reid said that he wants to get him even more involved, which is kind of surprising considering I think he had 61, 60, over 60 targets last year, which was, um, which was pretty high in the NFL in terms of running back. So, uh, getting a guy like Kamara is obviously valuable because he has so many uh, targets and so much so much value in a full PPR league. So those are the things you want to be waiting that towards if you're in a PPR league, of course. I don't think it necessarily makes wide receivers more valuable. 
I think it makes the running backs who catch the ball a lot more valuable. So a guy like Jarek McKinnon, who's down here, is someone I would be targeting. I don't know if I want to reach all the way up to 13, but say I had a pick maybe around 15, whereas a normal like half-point PPR or standard, I would definitely be waiting on McKinnon a little further. But the fact that he's in Kyle Shanahan's offense now, and you look at what Carlos Hyde did catching, what did he catch, like almost 60 balls last year, and McKinnon's a much, much better pass catcher than um, Carlos Hyde is. So, you know, McKinnon's a guy I'm looking to target early in PPR leagues. Melvin Gordon, I'm a little worried about too, because he has um, Austin Eckler there and they just drafted Justin Jackson. So I feel like they might lighten up his workload a little bit, maybe not on the rushing side of things, but at least in the passing game. So I'm definitely not down on Melvin Gordon by any means, um, but I'll take a step back in terms of PPR leagues. My guys I'm looking at right now would definitely be Michael Thomas, Christian McCaffrey, or Keenan Allen. You got to love Keenan Allen, of course, in PPR leagues. So Christian McCaffrey came out of the draft as a big winner, right? Because they lost Jonathan Stewart, um, and they need like a first down and early down back. But they didn't, they didn't add anyone through free agency, and they didn't add anyone in the draft. So as of right now, obviously, there's other veterans still available. You know, DeMarco Murray's out there. A couple other guys are out there. I think I really like the idea of having Michael Thomas this year, though. When I made the wide receiver rankings video, the more I talked about Thomas, um, you know, I had Devonta Adams as a wide receiver for, but the more I talked about Thomas, he's had, what does he have, back-to-back catch, back-to-back 90-yard catch seasons. He had a down year in terms of touchdowns, but I don't think that's going to happen again. Um, I, I think he's in for a positive regression here. I want to check out this, the statistic numbers. This is FF Today. I've showed you guys this in my top resource video. If you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description, as always, where are we at with the season longs, Bri? Michael Thomas. Okay, so he had over 100 catches last year. 92, then 104. And like I said, that 149 target mark was pretty much um, like 28% of the team's target. So he's a high-end elite wide receiver one right now, especially in terms of Breeze's eyes, because you don't give someone that many targets if you're, you know, if he's not your first go-to option on every part of the field. So Michael Thomas, I think his floor in terms of PPR leagues is really, really high. And I think the positive regression for touchdowns is uh, he's going to be in a really, really, really good spot. So who do we have off the board? McCaffrey, yeah, he went quick. Whoever's drafting first, I mean, that was a good pick with McKinnon, but I don't know. Like having Gurley or Le'Veon Bell available at one, and then Mike Evans also. Mm, Jordan Howard, too early in a full PPR league. Deshaun Watson, all right. This is where things just start getting ridiculous. <laughs> Someone picked Deshaun Watson. So in a full PPR league, right, depending on your settings, um, and guys, I have the uh, my best league settings rules video already queued up, so that's going to be coming out next week. It's already done, finished. I just have to publish it out to you guys. And I talk a lot about how people should start changing their quarterback rules, but if you are in a league that just is completely standard for, running, uh, for quarterbacks, right, like four points per passing touchdown, 25 yards as a point, nothing else, nothing special, and you're in, like, full PPR, their value takes even more of a hit because, one, there's so many streamers available if you're starting one quarterback. But, two, like, the the skill players have more value. They're putting up – normally you like, oh, you want a good quarterback because they outscore all the other positions, but that's not the case in PPR usually. If you have a good wide receiver, um, they'll most likely hit their match or outscore starting quarterback. So if you're in full PPR, even half PPR too, quarterbacks take even less value. Okay, so we had a couple tight ends off the board. I'd be ecstatic if Joe Mixon fell to me here. Nope, that didn't happen. So where are we looking right now? Douglas, what running backs? Okay, so there's still, I forgot about the rookie running backs. We're going to be all the way down here too. Love Juju this year after Martavis fell. Yeah, so I'm just not looking at tight end until there's good value. I'll be targeting Hunter Henry in pretty much every single draft as long as Antonio Gates retires, which I expect. So I'm still looking at skill players here. Full PPR, I like Doug Baldwin. I think he's going to catch a lot of balls with Paul Richardson and Jimmy Graham gone. I think that raises his touchdown ceiling and his just big playability. you got to love Fitz as well in a PPR league. I wish I shored up a running back. Now is when I kind of regret not taking Michael Thomas because, as you can see, there's still a lot of really good wide receivers for PPR leagues. But now when you hit the running backs, there's a lot of question marks here. So I'm probably going to go with Baldwin here. If I had a little more time, I might actually look at one of the rookie running backs. Fucking motherfucker. They had one second on the clock. They took Derrick Henry for me, but I meant to take Doug Baldwin there, so keep that in mind. So, yeah, like uh, some of the rookie running backs I really love. I, uh, you know, I put out the rookie video so you guys can get a better feel for that. But, like, 
I love Darius Geis. He's obviously going to take a little bit of a hit in PPR leagues because Chris Thompson is in Washington. So full PPR, I would probably have Rashad Penny ahead of Geis because, you know, you pick him in the first round and they're already talking about using him as their three down featured back. So he's going to get a lot of volume and he's probably going to be using the passing game quite a bit. The other thing I like about these rookie running backs, I love Sony Michelle. Man, I really, really love Sony Michelle. Um, I just think he is probably, you know, I mean, he's behind Bart. He might be a better all around runner than Barkley. You know, Barkley is obviously head over heels a better athlete than everyone in this class in terms of speed, agility, playmaking ability, things like that. But I think Sony Michelle might actually be the number one inside runner and like running back. And I think um, the Patriots actually had the most targets to their running back position in the entire NFL last year. So even if you think, you know, Burkhead and James White might combine for 100, I think they had 150. So Sony Michelle can finish the year with like 35 targets and the 35 receptions, which is really not that much to ask for, for a Patriots first round running back. I'm going to go with Michelle here because I hyped him up. I feel like I got to take him. So also pretend that's Doug Ball in there. But, you know, let's look at this. Let's look at um, Sharp Stats because I've talked about this on my site before. This is a website, Sharp Football Stats, where this guy compiled like every – possible statistic you could look for, which is out of control. I don't really know how he does it, but target rate by position. I want to see the Patriots throwing to their running backs. I want to see what's the most likely scenario for Sony Michelle, because obviously he's going to be their early down back. I see him getting 200 carries, if not more. I know it's easy to be like, ah, maybe not, but guys, remember how, how involved LeGarrette Blunt was two years ago. If they have a LeGarrette Blunt and Sony Michelle is so much of a better runner than LeGarrette Blunt was, Look at this target rate. 27% of their passes went to running backs. That's a lot of passes, guys. The only team that had more than them was the Saints, or actually a few other teams did, but the league average was 21. New England threw to their running backs 27% of the time. I'm going to look at 2016, too, because they give that available. Jamal Lee. I also want to look at the, how many plays that is, I guess, overall. So New England, 24%. Again, one of the highest in the league, 18%. So if they had, if they threw to their running backs on 27% of their plays last year, ooh, New England had 767 passes. What does that equate out to 27%? I don't even know if you guys are seeing all this. What was it, 727%? What? Is that right? That doesn't make sense. There's no way they passed the ball 700. I feel like that's got to be wrong, right? Let me check that right quick, boys. This is out of control. Yeah, five. okay, 587. I was going to say, where are they getting that number from? 587 times, so 100, almost almost 160 targets to their running backs. So you can have guys like Burkhead. And this is awesome for Burkhead, too, because as much as people are shitting on Burkhead and even like James White, there are so many targets to go around for the running back position there, guys. I know Julian Edelman is back, but Brandon Cooks is gone. So in terms of targets, it's almost a wash between those two. So, boom, give James White, give, give um, Rex Burkhead 100 targets, 110 targets between those two. And, and Michelle could still end up with 40 to 50 targets. And if he is the athlete that I think he is, he'll catch a high percentage of those balls and he'll turn those into good yards. So the fact that his touchdown floor is so high, as well as his um, touchdown ceiling, you know, and his rushing yard total, it, I just, I don't know. I just think he's in a great spot to – to really do work this year. And I love Sonny Michelle as a fourth round pick. So who else do we have off the board? Fitz went right after me. Alex Collins is a guy that I like. He was definitely a winner in the draft considering they did not touch the position whatsoever. But at the same time, he's not a good, he's not a great pass catcher. They didn't use him much. And Kenneth Dixon is probably a better athlete in terms of being a pass catcher there. So I'm a little scared about that. Jay Ajayi, another winner in the draft, probably Corey Clement, man. I told you he's one of my big sleepers this year, Corey Clement. He'll be the goal line back there. He's going to get a lot of passing work. So Corey Clement's the guy I'm targeting late in the draft in almost every PPR league. All right, so we had a that's a horrible pick, Jimmy Graham, as a fourth tight end in a PPR league. That's just the worst thing I've ever seen. I like Deion Lewis a lot in PPR leagues because he's going to they're going to split work there, man. Derrick Henry, he's not on my team. Get him off my team. I'm pissed he was drafted. You know what? I wouldn't even have been mad if they auto drafted someone on my team, but the fact that they gave me Derrick Henry really makes me angry. Okay, so Carlos Hyde, yeah, I just think those are bad picks, all of them. Running back, speaking of Burkhead, like that, Cohen, Chris Thompson. I think the fifth round's a little early for these guys who only specialize in 
um, PPR leagues because, you know, they'll have their games where they're kind of like boomer bust. So if Rashad Penny, I'm not going to take Rashad Penny right now because I feel like that would be cheating the system because he's going to be realistically going in like the third round by the time real drafts come. So for y'all's sake, for my sake, I'm not going to, I ain't going to play the game. Same thing with Rod. This is when I would start targeting Ronald Jones, but I'm going to look at wide receivers. Uh, I really like Julian Edelman in PPR leagues this year. So I'm going to go with Julian Edelman probably. Tell me I got my pick in. Yeah. I have to disappoint you. So I took, oh, wow. Okay, so he must be on auto draft. They took Greg Olson, Corey Davis. Um, I think I'm just going to straight up go with Hunter Henry here. I guess I'll talk about him for a second. So like I said, I think I'm going to try to own Hunter Henry in basically every single one of my leagues this year. Every single one of them, right? He has so much breakout potential to finish as the top two or three tight end this year. With Antonio Gates still not re-signed. I'm not sure what's going on there but clearly they don't really want to re-sign him. The offense should be a good offense, a really good offense. They have great defense now, and I think that's going to equate into a lot of field position, a good field position battles for them, um, which means a lot of goal line, a lot of end zone targets. You know, Antonio Gates re- really didn't play much last year. He was a shell of himself. He was still the second most targeted tight end inside the 10-yard line. So give a lot of those to Hunter Henry, man, and I feel like he's really on the verge of a breakout. So I'm I'm not usually I'm usually one of the guys that's like I'm getting Gronk in round two, or I'm waiting till like round twelve and trying to hit on a sleeper. But Hunter Henry's a guy I love mid round, especially in PPR because he's going to get a ton of targets and a ton of looks. Um, quarterback, I'm probably I'm just going to keep waiting on running backs, wide receivers. Let's see. Oh, I want to talk about Ronald Jones a little bit. Now I kind of went off on him in my rookie video. And I got some pushback, you know, that maybe I was a little bit too much on him. And maybe, you know, and and again, the thing is, uh, I, you know, he he does look very talented on tape in terms of like being an an athlete, a really good, like one plant running back. I would say, you know, Peyton Barber is there and Charles Sims is there. Now, I'm not worried about Peyton Barber eating into his workload. He's more of just a change of pace guy because, I mean, they did use him heavily last year, and they had no problem giving him 20 touches a game, um, but he's nowhere near the talent Ronald Jones is. I think people need to kind of watch out for Charles Sims as well. You know, I don't think Ronald Jones is an automatic PPR stud. He, he, he didn't catch the ball at all at USC. He barely played in the passing game, and Charles Sims is there as a pass-catching specialty back. So if you're going to – Um, be really high on Ronald Jones, then you're doing it strictly from a volume standpoint, in my opinion. So I I think before, you know, that's probably the knock on a lot of these rookie running backs is they go to situations where you're not really sure what their involvement in the passing game is going to be. And that's, that's Ronald Jones. That's Royce Freeman. That's Darius Geis. That's Sony Michelle. Thing is nowadays, almost every NFL team has two backs that they use. You're rarely going to get a guy that does all three downs and plays all three downs consistently, which is why I want to get a few of those guys in the top half of my draft. Because, you know, when you look at running backs now, I mean, there are still good ones left because the rookies are there. But if you take the rookies out of what we have here, Marshawn Lynch, Jamal Williams, Marlon Mack was a huge winner of the draft, obviously, too. But you know what I'm saying? But you look at wide receivers like Hogan's got a ton of upside. Um, Actually, you know, what? they're getting pretty thin now here. I still like Sanders, even though they drafted two rookie wide receivers in um who was it Traycon Smith and no Traycon Smith went to the Saints uh Cortland Sutton and uh I forgot the other one that they drafted they drafted two they're also getting Carlos Henderson back so those are Sanders and Thomas are getting old I think they're going to be 31 next season and if they cut them next season there's barely any dead money that's going towards them so that's why the 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 Broncos are stacking up. So if you have like a keeper league or a dynasty league, those Denver wide receivers are guys that you should be looking at for sure. And now we're seeing a run of quarterbacks. I'm still waiting on quarterbacks because listen, man, you could just grab Pat Mahomes and James Winston or something like that. Pat Mahomes and Matt Ryan, you know, and uh, you should be fine between one of them in a full PPR league. So, you know, right now, what do we have? We have Kareem Hunt, Sony Michelle is our two running backs, Michael Thomas, Julian Edelman, and I had Doug Baldwin there, so we'll pretend he's still there. Now I'm probably looking at still just skill players, nothing crazy. We have our tight end position filled in. Let me take a look around. I've just been talking and not even really been looking at anything. Mm-mm-mm. I like the value at running back. I like Marlon Mack's upside here a lot, so I'm going to go with Marlon Mack in the seventh because they did not draft anyone. They did not 
take anyone in free agency. Um, again, I'll talk about this after I make my Zam pick. Okay. Okay. I'll take Rojo here. This is about the time. Rojo. Rojo. So Marlon Mack, yeah, the Colts didn't add anyone through free agency. Or uh, actually they added uh, Naheem Hines later in the draft, who's a really good athlete, a really good pass catcher. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he played on a lot of third downs. But if Mac's going to be the early down guy, I mean, it all really depends on Andrew Luck, too. Still, I don't even think he's throwing the damn football yet. But a lot of it depends on Andrew Luck. Um, if Andrew Luck is back healthy and they don't sign C.J. Anderson or DeMarco Murray, or even like Adrian Peterson, I think, is a free agent, too. Um, then then he's set up to have at least a big workload, even if you don't think he's a good back. I know there's like all the stats that are thrown around is how he's like a boomer bust guy, right? And I said the same thing. He either runs for like 25 yards or he gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, that is what we see a lot from him. But if you're going to give him volume, he's going to bust out a few few runs a game. So I'm cool with Mac in the seventh round. There's not, not really much downside there um, once at least we know what the roster is looking like. Ronald Jones late. Okay, I want I want Corey Clement bad. I really, 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 really want him. I think guys probably left the draft and it's kind of auto picking. Would I start looking at quarterbacks? Probably, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I like Stafford a lot, so maybe I'll grab him. Who else do I like in terms of running backs? I like Aaron Jones, especially. Oh, there he goes in PPR leagues. I think he's a much better pick than Jamal Williams. I just don't think Jamal Williams is a good. I think he's a. Eh. Running back, um, I think the only reason he's even like they, – they didn't – they're also winners in the draft too because they didn't take any running backs. Um, I don't think the Packers did or sign anyone in free agency. So the volume is going to be there for whichever running back comes out. Jamal Williams did have games where he had high volume, and he was really good in the receiving game surprisingly, but um, he was not good at a run, as a runner at all. His, his efficiency was horrible. Uh, he was just getting stuffed over and over again. He's not a guy who makes guys miss, so I think eventually – that will shine through, and Aaron Jones will get a lot more playing time. So I like Aaron Jones over Jamal Williams. Royce Freeman I like a lot, so I would probably take Freeman here again. I don't expect him to be available in the ninth round in your leagues, especially in 12-team leagues. So I'm going to be more realistic and look at wide receivers. Parker, no, Benjamin. I like Cobb. Um, he's pretty much set up as the wide receiver, too, and we've, had him had, we've seen him have success with um, Aaron Rodgers before, right? They drafted a few late round wide receivers. I think they took three of them. Equinemia St. Brown is a guy to keep an eye on. Um, very touted before the draft. Pro Football Focus loved him like their ninth ranked wide receiver. I didn't really get to look at the list, so I'm just going to take Cobb for now, but I'll talk about it after I do my next pick because I think this guy's on auto. Oh, down to Foreman. That's a good pick by him. These mock drafts really, I, what, I don't want you to really take away like what my team ends up as being. I just like kind of talking you through my thought process throughout the drafts, not like really looking at the final result of my team. So normally, like, listen, I would go with Nick Chubb here. Royce Freeman's fine. I'm going to go with Corey Clement because, again, I this early in the summer, I don't really like to take the rookies because I think it's unrealistic and it doesn't really help you guys, except for the fact that I took Ronald Jones and Sony Michelle. But I think those are realistic round. Oh, Sony Michelle re is realistic in the fourth round. Ronald Jones probably not. But – Talking about the running backs again, um, Nick Chubb, someone had made a really good comparison on my channel. They're like the DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry this year, the Hyde and Chubb. Again, I think Chubb is far more talented, uh, but again, they gave Hyde a lot of money and they're not just going to give him the give him the rock 20 times a game because he's a talented running back, especially with Duke Johnson there. So his his passing game upside is very limited. He did not catch the ball a lot at Georgia. So in PPR leagues, I'm, I'm probably off Chubb at where you're going to have to take him. Corey Clement. Why I love Corey Clement. He is the clear number two there behind Jay Ajayi, who, Jay Ajayi, who needs to stay healthy, first of all, with that whole knee thing, um, even though I don't really want to hold that against him because he hasn't really missed any games. But Clement emerged as the passing down back there. I hate that they signed re they re signed Sproles. I don't know why they needed to do that. He's coming off an of injury. So that's a lesson I learned from last year. I was really high on Danny Woodhead. And I think the fact – I think – the reason I was wrong on Danny Woodhead is I assumed he'd be back and healthy from the ACL tear. What happens is like the the injuries when you're older are harder to recover from. It's not it's not so much like you're more likely to get injured when you're older, but when you have a serious injury, it's a lot harder for your body to recover from and come back as like the same player. So I'm not really like sold on Sproles 
being huge into this offense because he is old now. I think he's like 36 or something. So Clements, the the handcuff in terms of a running back, and he emerged as a pass catcher. I think he caught four balls for about 100 yards in the Super Bowl. Um, and he's big, too. He's built like a – he's like 5'11", 225. So he's built like a feature back, too. If he can get a good rushing uh, workload along with third down – um, work. He's the he's the goal line back there too. There's so much upside with Clement. I really like him as a as a late round pick. Ooh, Georgie Kittle's off the board. Georgie Kittle's the guy that if I don't get Hunter Henry, I'm pretty much assuring myself to grab George Kittle at one point. Quarterbacks are making a run, so I'm probably going to um, grab one here. So here's the thing, right? Like I waited all the way. It's the 11th round of a 12 team league, and I can have my choice of Matt Ryan, Pat Mahomes, James Winston, Tyrod Taylor, even. So, you know, there's plenty of players to draft that I'd feel comfortable with in a PPR league being my quarterback. I'm going to go with Matt Ryan. Maybe it's biased, but what is he? What's he off the board? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he's the 14th quarterback off the board. I haven't even looked at the makeup of my team. So I have I have a lot of running backs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 wide receivers. I probably need some wide receiver depth here. What do we got going on in Dallas? Okay, so Alan Hearns is kind of the wide receiver one there, even though they did take Gallup, you know, in the third round, who I do like. But I think, like, I they're both both probably guaranteed uh, a lot of targets. So I like Alan Hearns here just based off volume. I think he's a good player, too. He's still, like, 26 years old. He had two awesome seasons in Jacksonville when he was younger. So he's proven that he could do it before. Put him in the situation where Dez is gone, Jason Witten is gone. There are so many targets up for grab in that Dallas offense. So I'm cool with um, Alan Hearns or Michael Gallup, you know, this late in the draft. The upside isn't necessarily there because his offense is probably not going to be that good. And Dak kind of took a step back last year. And they're just not ultra talented players. But in terms of volume, they're pretty safe, like wide receiver three, fours, and PPR. And that's where I'm getting them. Uh, Matt Ryan. So he had, you know, as bad as as good as he was two years ago, he was equally as bad last year in terms of touchdown percentage. So his average, he blew his average out of the water in 2016. And then he went way under 2017. If he can get back to his norm, which he had like the eight years prior to that, he's going to be a fine fantasy quarterback again. Um, Second year in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. I don't hate Matt Ryan as the 15th quarterback off the board. A lot of quarterbacks going now. I'll probably grab a second one here again just to sure up that spot. Who do we like? Who do we like? I like Tyrod, man. I really do. Think about what Tyrod did in Buffalo despite having like almost no weapons ever. I would love Lamar Jackson, but he's not um he's not gonna be a starter in 2018. I also like Eli a lot. When you look at the splits, Eli with and without Odell Beckham, man, they are pretty staggering. I'm actually gonna show them to you. He's played way better with Odell. And now he has like a really good safety valve in Saquon Barkley. So Eli is a guy that I think people might be sleeping on, even if you don't think he's talented, which is, you know, he's not talented really anymore. Um, He is a guy that, oh, my man's Anthony Miller is still there. We out here. Yep. He's a guy that can put up some good weeks for you, I bet, in fantasy when he has good matchups. Let me go Eli Manning. Eli Manning thing. When did Odell come into the league? Came into the league in I think in 2014, right? I think. So in split versus out of split. Look at Eli's numbers, man. Five and a half or six fantasy points more per game. More completions, obviously. Less interceptions. Like 0.6 more touchdowns. Yards per attempt is up. Passing yards is almost 50 yards more per game. So, you know, he's been bad. Um, but he also he also hasn't had a lot of weapons to work with, man. Oh shit, we went to my pick again. All right, so now it's just kind of everyone's just like skipping through their picks. So I'm kind of get gonna get through this quickly, and then just um, and then we could talk about the picks afterwards. What? How's Chris? Th- oh, that's the wrong Chris Thompson. Don't make that mistake, fellers. Oh, there's no one left at running back. Kirk. Christian Kirkby. I think that is it for this. So, number 11, this is my team, and remember that uh, I took Doug Baldwin instead of Derrick Henry here. So, here's the thing. Eli has not had a lot of weapons to work with either, Um, and when he has Odell, he's really good. Last year, he didn't have Odell for a large portion. Now, he's going to have Odell. Now, he's going to have an improved offensive line, adding Solder and Will Hernandez. He's going to have Evan Ingram. 
He's going to have Saquon Barkley out of the backfield. I think people underestimate how important having like a, a safety valve like a Saquon Barkley or someone who's really good in the passing game with them back there. So I think Eli is actually a pretty good late round quarterback uh, pick. So the rest of my team, um, I had a question that someone left on my channel the other day, a comment saying, um, how many rookies are you comfortable having on your roster? And I do not look at rookies that way whatsoever. And you shouldn't either. Rookies are just another player. It's all about value picks, right? If someone lets Saquon Barkley drop to you in the second round, Sony Michelle into the fifth, Ronald Jones into the ninth, um, Royce Freeman into the 10th, Anthony Miller into the 14th. Like, I'm happy with all those guys on my team. I don't care if they're rookies. I care that where I got them in the draft is a really good spot and good value for me. So my starting running backs are Kareem Hunt, Sony Michelle. I like Michelle as an RB2, and I think there's plenty of upside between Mac, Ronald Jones, Corey Clement there. I think at least one of them will be really good this year, right? If not for Marlon Mack's got pretty much a volume stamp. Mack and Ronald Jones both have a volume upside or volume floor, I should say, a volume floor, right? But they both also have upside as the RB1 in their offense. Corey Clement's the RB2, so he has a lower floor, but a really high ceiling if something were to happen to Jay Jai. So it's not like you need to throw them into your lineup right away because, again, I have Michael Thomas. I have Doug Baldwin, I have Julian Edelman, Randall Cobb, Alan Hearns, Anthony Miller, all really good PPR plays. You got to remember that this is full PPR. And um, Christian Kirk is a guy I want to touch on for a second. Really talented slot receiver. Um, the Cardinals pick him. He's a good guy for keeper leagues, a good guy for dynasty leagues because he kills it in the slot. He's a super aggressive guy, like a Jarvis Landry almost. Fitz is obviously going to be on his last year. This is going to be his last year in, in Arizona. Um, so Kirk is going to take over that role in the slot next year, but they have almost no one there, right? They lost Jerron Brown. They lost, um, not JJ Nelson. They lost John Brown as well. So they desperately needed wide receivers there. They did bring in Bryce Butler, but I mean, I don't even, I still don't really understand where the Bryce Butler hype like ever, even came from or is ever came. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, why it's warranted considering Dal. Just think of it this way. Like Dallas had Bryce Butler on their roster. Got rid of Des Bryant, used a third round pick on a wide receiver, signed Alan Hearns, and had no interest in keeping Bryce Butler. Like they they were so desperate at wide receiver, yet they didn't want to keep Bryce Butler. That should tell you something about Bryce Butler. So maybe you've seen him make a play or two in the game, but the fact that the Cowboys wanted nothing to do with him despite being so desperate at the position should tell you that maybe he's not as good as you think he is. So don't get hyped up on Bryce Butler. I like Christian Kirk. I think he is like a night. Nice, I mean, I got him in the 15th round, but he's a great keeper league pick in the late rounds. Like in my money league, we can keep anyone from eighth round or later. If I can get Kirk in like the 13th round or like the 11th round or something, I think that's a really good pick because next year he's going to come in with Josh Rosen. I love when two guys come into the league together um, and they build that like that trust and, and over time, like they become like a really good tandem together. And that happens a lot with um, quarterbacks and slot receivers. So I like Kirk with Rosen next year because Fitz will be gone and a ton of targets will be open. So Kirk's not someone I necessarily think is going to make a big impact this year. But overall, that's the squad. Um, if you have any questions or if you would do anything differently, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Please thumbs up the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be doing videos like this all off season, And my pre-order draft guide is available right now on my site for a discounted price. It will go up on July 1st and it will release somewhere from early to mid July. The pre-order draft guide is awesome. It's completely interactive on your phone. You can flip through. You don't need to bring anything else to your draft. It's the one-stop shop to hook you up for your draft. My overall rankings, positional rankings by tiers, top sleepers, top busts. Y'all know the deal. I talk about it in basically every video, but um, you can go pre-order it now and the prices will go up soon. So Go support your boy. Do that again. Thumbs up, comment. I don't care. And I'll see y'all next time. If you're watching this, I'm already out in San Diego, baby.